Hello everybody, I am Nico D and this is the Zima board 832, so the 8 stands for 8 gigabytes of memory and 32 stands for 32 gigabytes of eMMC, so this is a very nice board, but the SOC is a bit aging, so uh, it is powerful, but it has got very nice specs like double SATA, it has 2 times gigabit ethernet, it has 2 times uh, USB 3, it also has power for SATA which is very handy and the main attraction of this board is of course the PCIe, so this is PCIe Gen 2 times 4, so 4 lanes, so you can upgrade this board. I am now using one as fast NAS, so I bought a 2.5 gigabit ethernet dongle for it. So I have got two SATA SSDs connected on the back and it works great. So I've got 280 megabytes a second with FTP. With Samba and with the Windows client I also get 280 megabytes a second. With Samba on a Linux client it is only 60 megabytes, but that's with all my devices. I do not know why that is. Samba always performs badly. And then SFTP is about 100 megabytes, so FTP is still the fastest if you are using a Linux client. I show that in my uh, video where I set up this board as a fast NAS. So watch that. So I also have got this. So this is the UE2 X1. This is a lot more powerful than this. But this has got some nice features that this doesn't have. This one has one times SATA over a ribbon cable. Uh, the biggest advantage of this is it's great heatsink. It's a very big heatsink. It is very heavy. So that is good. You cannot overheat this. This one has a fan and the fan makes noise. So this isn't perfect for a server. This is perfect for a server. Silent server. You are certain that it will not overheat. You can upgrade it like me. I am now using two times SATA and I have got one USB 3 port free so I can plug one more SSD into that and if by time I want to upgrade it I can plug in a SATA PCIe adapter so I have a lot more SATA ports so for that this board is great it isn't the most powerful as I said but it is a very nice board so let's go to the specs so the CPU is the Intel Celeron N3450 quad core up to 2.2 gigahertz. That is single core, multi core it can do about 2 gigahertz. So this is an aging SOC. It was released in 2016, so it is almost 8 years old. So the GPU is an Intel HD Graphics 500. It has got 8 gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM. It has got a 32 GB eMMC, it has got two SATA ports up to 6 gigabit per second, 2 times gigabit Ethernet, 2 times USB 3, and a PCI Express port Gen 2, 4 lanes, and for display it is a mini display port 1.2 up to 4K at 60 Hz. And it is powered with barrel jack 12 volts and a PSU as 3 amps, which is more than enough. Under the motto, don't turn it on but open it up, I of course open it up for you. So here the plastic plate goes off and then you see the motherboard, so it looks like a PCB from Apple. They also have got these black PCBs with not too much on it. There are two more screws that I don't see with my bad eyes. So when I unscrew those two, then I can take off the heatsink. And as you see they used a lot of thermal paste, really a lot, and everywhere too, so this board will not overheat, that is for sure. I will not repaste it right now, I should, I know, but I don't have the time for it since I'm making this video. So here we are in Casa OS, so Casa OS is not an operating system. It is a web interface that allows you to install docker container apps and manage them. So this is Debian Bullseye, so Casa OS is installed on a Linux distro, so this is Debian Bullseye that is used. And it has the GNOME desktop, but most people will never see this. 
The way to use this is to browse to the IP address of the board. So here it is 27, so it browses to this IP address and then you see the Casa OS web interface. So with this you can manage your board and install a lot of container apps. So here you see a few of them. You can also custom install, so you can install a lot of container apps on here. So let me install Pi-hole here. So something that you see here, the default passwords. I will say OK for now, but I will not use this. I will just show you how to install it. It is very simple. So this is something that we need to take care of. The default password of Casa OS is Casa OS. So this is not hard to hack. So if you know the IP address of the board, you can find that on your router page. Or there are apps to find the IP addresses of boards in your network. So then you SSH onto it, so SSH, CASA OS adds then the IP address. It will ask you for the password, so it is CASA OS. And now I will show you how to change this password, so we are a bit more secure. So we do sudo passwd to change the root password. So password is CASA OS. And two times type a new password. And now let's change the password for the user CASA OS. So for that we just type passwd, so two times a new password. So now you can go further with installing docker apps and using containers, but I think this is one thing that you have to do first. I of course am using Armbian, so this is Armbian Jammy. So let me show you, settings about, so here you can see Armbian Jammy 23.11.1. So this is downloaded from the Armbian website, so let me go to the Armbian website. There to download. And here we see Intel AMD, and those images run on any x86 PC. So here we've got Bookworm and Jami CLI. Then here we have got Armion Bookworm, Cinnamon, Gnome, Minimal and XFCE and I3M, Jami, KDE and Minimal. Then if we go down a little bit more, here we see Armbian with Home Assistant, Armbian with Open Hub and Armbian with the Kali Linux applications installed. And then here on the bottom there is Trixie Minimal with 6.7 kernel, Trixie Minimal with the 6.6 .6 kernel, Armbian Noble with XFCE with the 6.6 .6 kernel and Armbian Noble XFCE with 6.7 kernel. So the 6.7 is the latest, 6.6 .6 is the new current. So if you want Casa OS on Armbian that is also possible, so only on Armbian Jammy. So if we type Casa OS install, then we get to the Casa OS wiki. And here this line we have to copy and paste in a terminal. So let me do that. And then we wait until everything is finished. And once it is finished, we again do the same, so we open a browser, we type the IP address of the board, and here is Casa OS. So I have to choose a username, I have to choose a password. So here you have the storage manager, with this you can format your drives and create storage for Casa OS. I am still learning about Casa OS, so I will make a separate video later on about Casa OS itself. So now let's go to the benchmarks. So the 7 zip results don't lie. The Zima board isn't that powerful. It gets 7407 all cores. The UE2X1 gets 12487. RK3399 does 16916 and you can read the rest. So the Zima board is about as powerful as a Kadas Vim 2. But that is ARM versus x86. 
and this is only one task, you cannot compare x86 with ARM like that. And here the rest of the benchmark results. So there is a problem with Blender on x86 Jammy. So there it performs worse than it should perform. But you can compare the Zima board with the X1. So the Zima board does 41 minutes 33 seconds. And the UE2 X1 does 27 minutes and 21 seconds. So with Super Tux card Casa OS with Debian Bullseye performs best with 38 frames per second. The UE2 does 53 frames per second in Jammy. While the Mixtile Blade 3 with the RK3588 does 69 frames per second with Pan Fork and 110 frames per second with the Blob Driver. In CPU Miner x86 does better than ARM because it is more optimized for this. So 16.5 for the Zima board, 21.7 for the UE2 X1, 24.5 for RK3588 and 5.75 for the Odroid C2. So the Zima board isn't powerful at all, but it doesn't need to be powerful to be useful. And here are the transfer rates. So the EMMC of 32 gigabytes does 164 megabytes a second read, 50 megabytes a second write. SSD over SATA does 546 megabytes a second read and 509 megabytes a second write. The same SSD over USB 3 does 400 megabytes a second read and 379 megabytes a second write. And my SD card over USB 3 does 91 megabytes a second read and 84 megabytes a second write. A bit too bad that there is no onboard SD card reader. And then the network performance with gigabit Ethernet I get 943 megabits per second. And with my 2.5 gigabit Ethernet USB 3 adapter I get 2.34 gigabit a second. So with Casa OS and with ARM in Jammy I had bad performances. So I show that in my video where I set up the Zima board as fast NAS. So 39 megabytes a second over Samba with gigabit Ethernet. SFTP does 73 megabytes a second download but upload only 40 megabytes a second. FTP the same 37 megabytes a second. So this isn't a problem with the network but this is a problem with my mounted drives. So in Windows they perform great. In ARM and Noble they perform great. But in ARM and Jammy and Debian Bullseye I have bad performances. I have not found the cause of it. But I did find a solution, so using Armbian Noble, but you cannot install Casa OS on Armbian Noble. So with Armbian Noble and my 2.5 gigabit Ethernet adapter, I get 60 megabytes a second read and write with Samba. With SFTP, I get 100 megabytes a second, even up to 110. And with FTP, I get the full speeds of 283 megabytes a second. So with Windows and Samba it also works at 280 megabytes a second. It is only when the client is a Linux desktop that you have problems with Samba and SFTP. That is why I'm also using FTP. And here the temperatures and the power consumption. So in idle it is 36 degrees Celsius and it consumes 6 watts. And maxed out it goes up to 62 degrees Celsius and consumes 19 watts. So this is where it shines, it will never overheat, even in very hot weather this will not overheat, just don't put it in the sun. I really love this heatsink, I just wish there was a better sock underneath it, but for my goal of fast NAS that doesn't matter. It does consume a bit more than my previous NAS, the NanoPi R6S, but now I can have more than one SSD. The NanoPi R6S only had one USB 3 port. Here I've got two SATA ports, one USB port as for my 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. So I've got one USB port left and then I can upgrade it with PCIe. So my conclusion is that I like the Zima board a lot. I love the design of it, certainly of the heatsink. It does great as my fast NAS. I don't have any other boards that have dual SATA and USB 3. I do have two Odroid HC4s, but they don't have USB 3, so no 2.5 gigabit Ethernet possible on that. 
So this board is really upgradable. I will buy a PCIe network card next month. I will use it in my PC, but I will test it on this board. So I will show that in a later video where I test the PCIe on this board. I couldn't buy a card this month because I bought the Raspberry Pi 5 that is coming. So my dream x86 board would be this design, so this heatsink. I would like to have a power button and a reset button, an SD card reader, the Intel N100 or N95 SOC, 2.5 gigabit ethernet instead of single gigabit ethernet. And for the rest I would keep it as it is. It is an old SOC and this is a newer version with 8 gigabytes of memory. So there was a 232 with 2 gigabytes of memory, the 432 with 4 gigabytes, that's what I'm using for my fast NAS. And then there is this one, the 832 with 8 gigabytes of memory. For docker containers, the 8 gigabytes of memory can be very useful. So that will be it for today. Thank you all for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel. See you all later. Bye.